we're back with the 780 today. The triple, the sled that we picked up just a few weeks back for 250 bucks. And now that we're getting into it, I think I really understand why. Most times I have plans for my videos. Like we're gonna get into the motor. We're gonna take this apart. We're gonna fix this and we're gonna, we're gonna have it back on the trail today. This one is gonna quickly turn into a nightmare. I can, I can already feel it. Since the last time we worked on it, I've learned a few things about this machine. So we've got a 1994 Mach-Z, nothing matches up. The hood is wrong, the chassis is wrong, the skid is wrong. About the only thing that transfers over is the engine, which makes it tough to source parts for if you don't know what you're looking for. So for today, it sucks because there's so many bad places we can start. Usually I have these videos planned out of what I'm gonna do. We could start with the fried electrical, we could start with testing the motor we can start with the fuel system i think we're going to start with the motor i think that's what makes most sense if the engine isn't good that basically puts the brakes on this entire project so we'll do our engine test today just like we did on the big bore the other day there uh, i have some concerns about how this engine was stored over the last however many years it's been sitting once we verify that we've got a good engine then I can go and I can chase around that electrical problem. Uh, it's not as interesting and it's always a pain in the fucking ass. So I'll go around, I'll chase the electrical issues. Let's do engine tests. So we're very quickly into my biggest concern, which is uh, the engine and specifically moisture in the engine. I was feeling really good about this engine and then I saw how the spark plugs were stored and how it is just basically a little puddle of water around each plug, because check this out. See, none of these spark plugs were fully installed when I got the unit. And there's lots of other places that water can get in from, but that's a bad one. PTO plug looks okay. Middle plug, good again, not seeing any corrosion on it. The feeling this mag one was the one I pulled and it was the one with corrosion on it. It's definitely got a little bit on there. I have this feeling that we're going to be taking the head off. Okay, I'm going to douse the cylinders with a little bit of gas and oil because I don't know how long they've been sitting there dry and the fuel system is obviously not working. And then after this, I will run a compression test on it. And I know that what I'm doing is probably going to skew the numbers a little bit, but I don't really want to be yanking on an engine that's been sitting so long with the fuel system obviously not working and the cylinder's probably dry as hell. I, I haven't even yanked on this thing yet. Okay, well, it feels good. PTO side hole. Uh, we'll call it 126 pounds. I don't know. I haven't looked up the uh, the uh, spec for this yet. We're at like 128, 129 on that one. All right, let's move on to the one I'm worried about: the mag side piston. This is the one we were seeing all that corrosion in, so we'll have to see. Since this is the one I'm actually worried about, I'm going to sit here and watch the numbers climb. So on the piston that I thought was going to be an issue, we're actually sitting at that 128, 129 mark. I decided I wanted to double check uh, the PTO piston just to make sure. And yeah, I gave that one a few extra pulls and it came up to that 128, 129 Mark II, just like the other ones. We're not gonna open up that motor. We're definitely gonna leave that motor alone. I'm pretty well happy saying that the motor is fine at this point. That's just such a huge relief for me. Like th this thing's been sitting here in the shop for a few weeks and I knew there was a little bit of corrosion down that one hole, but the heart is good. So that's, that's a huge relief. And. Uh, we got like a well-balanced triple. We got three cylinders that are all within like 1% compression balance. Huh. I thought for sure we'd be taking the head off this thing today. Well, I thought for sure we'd be going into the motor. Uh, that's, that's what I had planned for the rest of this video. It's just the electrical and getting spark to it now. 
So the story I was fed is that there was an electrical fire and that's the reason it doesn't run, but like the worst I can see is that that connector, the one that we, we pointed out in the first video. So if it's just that stator connection, we might not be far away from getting this to run. Ah, oh, fuck it, Let, let's bypass that tether connection. Let's, let's see if there's spark. There, tether system bypassed. Just wanna check if this system is normal open or normal close. Should be normal open. Yeah, normal open. This is all going a little too well. Fuck, could you imagine if we had fucking spark too? I, I doubt it, but you never know. Oh, that right side is saggy. That's the side that needs the shock. I didn't notice this part until I was actually done shooting and editing the video. Is right here, you can see, is I'm pretty sure I'm seeing a really weak little spark right here. Likely means those melted stator connections are definitely our problem. Now we know where that shock needs to go. This little side of the slide is about to collapse. I will make a repair to that connector. I'll, I'll do that on my own time off video. It's, it's not very interesting. This thing is going to be a little bit tough, us finding parts for it, because we're going to be picking parts off of this thing basically from anywhere from a 93 all the way up to like a 98 or something like that. Somebody said that this may have a cat secondary clutch. I can neither confirm nor deny that, but we can go looking on that clutch, see if we can find an Articat cat part number on it. I have not been into the clutches at all. Zero percent. Okay, so right away, uh, aftermarket helix. Let's see what we got here. Oh, of course it's a D&D. Belt is shot. The clutch is still floating, that's good. It does look like a cat clutch, but I don't want to be wrong. Like, it really looks like a cat clutch. Well, let's take it off, see if we can find part number. That's an Articat part number. Another Articat part number on the back here. So whoever pointed out that this was a cat clutch, you'd be right, good eye. Yeah, this clutch was either from a Thundercat or from a ZR or something like that, but Articat parts in our ski doo snowmobile. I gotta go in and play and diagnose with this rat's nest of wires and shit and figure out uh, our no spark issue. I'm gonna do that off camera because it takes a long time and it's pretty boring. I'm not tinkering around with these machines off camera, so I'm learning about these machines at the same time you are as we go through them together. This thing is a lot easier working on it than I'd imagine it being so far, but we're not done yet because it is a triple after all. I'm gonna tinker around a little bit with this Mach Z in the background. I'll tell you what I find with the electrical once I find it, but until then, like, subscribe, comment, make sure you do all that fun stuff, follow along. Um, this one is on pause for a little bit. I say it every video, I'm still looking for that Phaser 2 chassis and that Exciter 2 chassis. Thanks for watching. I'm starting to look like He-Man. Sponsors, Facebook, Instagram, Discords. we got a good little, cute little gaming community going on there. So if you want to come by, say hi, chat, hang out, talk shop. That's it for this video. I'm going to tinker with this thing. Figure out the no spark issue. Bike videos, I haven't really figured those things out yet just end up going out there and shooting and come back and go through the footage and that was boring yeah i haven't figured out how to make those videos yet